Well, it's difficult to identify Mexico as a third party in the, in the sense of third parties. <coughs> Why is it difficult? Well, because of NAFTA and because of North America. In reality, in reality, no negotiation, no transatlantic negotiation makes real sense if at the end of the day is not between the European Union and North America. And this is not me trying to get into the negotiation. It's a question of economics and realities. Why? Well, because North America is a highly integrated region. The value chain, the integration of value chains in North America is extraordinarily high. And that goes to Canada, to the US and Mexico. Let me give you an example. And this is just an example, a good example of many industries. Mexico is the fourth largest exporter of cars in the world, the sixth largest manufacturer of cars in the world. Every car that leaves a Mexican factory or a US factory crossed the border before, doing, before reaching the end at least seven times at least seven times. And the, this goes to petrochemicals, this goes to steel, this goes to electronics, you name it. Because that's precise aerospace. 20 years ago, you would have never thought, we Mexicans would have never thought, that today Mexico would be the first destination of foreign direct investment in the world in the aerospace sector. And this is precisely because Mexico, thanks to free trade, managed to enter this complex transition and to become a highly manufacturing competitive country. As a parenthesis, of course, uh, and that's why I was saying at the beginning, companies can't have a free trade out of this, a free ride out of this. They have to work. So when we entered NAFTA, many Mexican companies perished. Others suffered tremendously adapted, and today they are global companies. And then an entire host, a new generation of new Mexican entrepreneurs gave birth to a new generation of global competitive Mexican companies. So uh, we see certainly TTIP as a very, very uh, important positive effort. We hope that it really goes to the end. As you know, Canada finished their own bilateral negotiations with the European Union. Mexico has had uh, free trade with the EU since 2000, when our free trade agreement entered into force. We have announced jointly uh, the launching of the modernization or renegotiation of this free trade uh, bilateral treaty. Uh, by the way, in 2000, uh, Mexico-EU trade was basically meaningless. It was virtually zero. Today, 15 years later, is around 70 billion. Too bad, too low. That's why we want to renegotiate and to modernize. But you can see the trends out of, out of, out of free trade. To conclude in this, in this element of North America and the TTIP, at the end of the day, once Canada is done, TTIP is done, and the New Mexico is done, we will have to find ways to connect the three instruments. Simply again, because of this value chain um, integration that we have. So if you think of technical elements like rules of origin, for example, there will have to be very important uh, standardizations uh, between, uh, between the three. Finally, the European Union is a region of 506 million people. North America is an integrated region of 490 million people. So we are virtually the same in terms of population. North America is a highly competitive region. It's a highly integrated region that is following a very important positive trend of growth and modernization. So, 
not only in technical economic terms, but in the, in the long run, it will make a lot of sense for the EU to think more in terms of EU North America. And that's my, my impression is that that's the way we are thinking. But uh, Commissioner Marston has a representative here, so he will make, he can talk about that. Thank you so much.